Okay, so this is how we're going to think about XML. XML takes kind of the qualities of word processors, the qualities of HTML files, and the qualities of databases, and puts them all together into one system so that you can treat a document as a word processing document, like you type into it and you type all your stuff into it like you would in Word or you might in HTML. You can deal with it like an HTML document in the sense that it's going to be someday a web page. And you can also, and this is probably the most important one, you can treat it like a database. You can't treat a Microsoft Word file as a database. You can't treat, uh, you can't treat an HTML file like a database, meaning open the file, read from the file, query the file, get results back from the file, order those results, sort those results, do something with the results, right? Those are all database kinds of things. Um, so let me, let me define a database because there's no, there's no prerequisite that you know about databases to be in this class. So let me just quickly define a database as a file cabinet that's very well organized and allows you to do these four things. Put stuff in the file cabinet, get stuff out of the file cabinet, edit stuff that's in the file cabinet, in other words, change stuff that's in the file cabinet, and let's see what, oh, and make queries. Say, what's in here? Give me all the things that meet these criteria. So even if you know nothing about databases, I think you can realize right away that that's a pretty nice thing. That's a, that's a nice tool to have. I can store a lot of stuff in a very organized fashion. I can issue queries against that stuff and figure out what's in there and, and get it out in a particular way. I can add new things and I can get rid of things that are in there. Those are all the requirements for a large scale and well, well, well working data storehouse. Right? So that's how we're going to use XML as well. And if you don't understand that part, if you think of XML as kind of a glorified HTML, which is how a lot of people position it, then you're really missing the biggest point. If it was just a glorified HTML, well, then we could just forget about it and do HTML, because HTML is a lot easier. Right? You'll find that XML is definitely harder than HTML because it's more abstract. It's not what you see is what you get. It's not I put in a B tag and everything is going to become bold. It's much more than that. It's about the structure of the information. And because it's about the structure of the information, it can serve as a repository the same way that a database can serve as a repository. So on the other hand, as opposed to a database, it really behaves much more like a word processor. So in your general suite of uh, Microsoft Office desktop applications, which one comes closest to a database? Which one of the Excel, right? We pretty much agree that Excel comes fairly close to a database, at least as close as it gets without going into an actual database. Um, if you tried to use Microsoft Word to do things that are very, very Excel-like, would you get very far? No. It's just not set up right for that. It's not set up for recurring structured information the same way that Excel is. Excel is very well set up for recurring structured information. On the other hand, if you had a, a term paper to write, and you tried to write it in Microsoft Excel, would you get very far? Clearly not, right? Clearly these are two different ways of representing information. Well, the interesting thing is that XML crosses those two. It behaves like a structured database. It behaves like Excel in the sense that everything is properly formatted. Everything, I don't want to say format, structured. Everything is properly structured. Everything is ordered. Everything is in its right place. Everything is contained. Everything is named. On the other hand, it behaves like Microsoft Word, that you type linear narratives into it, that you can type large blocks of text, that it's, uh, that it's a reasonable tool for doing a term paper in, as opposed to, I wouldn't even think of doing a term paper in it. So it sort of splits that difference between being a data repository and also being a way to write a narrative which makes it a very useful tool for doing HTML websites, because HTML websites behave in that way, at least large ones do, as well. They need to be structured. They need to be well stored. You're going to manage a lot, a lot of information. But on the other hand, the information that you're managing is Microsoft Word-like. It's narrative-ish. It's not just data. If it was just data, then we'd probably just put a database behind a website. But if it's heavily text-ish, if it's heavily text -ish, information, if it's a lot of text information and that text information also needs to be structured, XML is an excellent choice. Okay, so you can treat XML files like a word processor in that you type into them, you edit them, you save them, etc. you display them. You can type, you can treat them like HTML files in the sense that 
what I'm typing in here is destined to be on a web page somewhere. You can treat them like a database and say that I'm, I'm querying this XML file, I'm getting results out of the XML file, I'm ordering those results, I'm, I'm getting structured information out, and then I'm going to do something with that structured information. Okay, so it's very interesting. It's, a, it's, it's, it's an interesting hybrid between things that you may not have put together before, specifically this one and this one. Right? And it also ends up becoming a nice replacement for HTML, this one in the middle. 